Hi, I'm Dr. Andy Thompson. This is COVID-19 update, May 4th, 2020. All data is of 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time to account for reporting. All videos can be found on roominfo.com slash blog. Current trajectories are much the same as they were last week, although you really see flattening now in Spain and Italy on the right-hand side. The United States is now over 1.2 million cases. There are now over 3.5 million cases worldwide. Here are the reported cases per million population. A couple of things to look at here. Germany, France, Italy, and Spain are all flattening. Canada is certainly marching along. We don't see much flattening there, nor in the United Kingdom, nor in the United States. Here are the percentage of deaths. United Kingdom the highest at 15.08%. Germany the lowest at 4.21%. Canada at 6.34%. Here are the actual numbers of deaths. The top number is the most recent day. The following numbers are the subsequent days before this. Take home points here. Deaths are down in most countries, actually. One country you look at, though, is Canada, where our deaths are still grumbling along. And I'm going to show you that in a minute. Here are the deaths per million population here. One thing I don't like about this is that we are diverging from Germany a little bit. Germany is flattening with the number of deaths, and we're not. We'll have to keep an eye on this as we move forward. Here are the new cases per day. And I, instead of showing the R0 today, I'm going to do something a little bit different, and it's going to emphasize this a little bit better. You'll see that Italy, Germany, France, and Spain have all come over the hump nicely. But when we look closely at the data, Canada... The United States and the United Kingdom are right on, right on the top, and I'll show you why that is. So here's the new cases per day in Italy. The dark black line is the seven-day moving average, so the average of new cases over the last seven days. And you can see Italy is certainly over the hump in terms of new cases. Here's Spain. Similar picture in Spain. They're over the hump in terms of new cases. They are still having over 2,000 new cases a day, though. Here's Germany. Again, over the hump in terms of new cases. And France, similar picture. If you look at the United Kingdom, you'll see that there's not really a downslope that started yet. So they're really what looks like on top of the hump and hopefully will be coming down soon. Here's the United States. Again, same picture as the United Kingdom. There's no really, not really a downslope that's started just yet. And here's Canada. Again, similar picture to the United Kingdom, United States. Again, we're flattening on the top, but we've not started going down. What about daily deaths? Here's Italy, over the hump. Spain, over the hump. Germany, same thing, over the hump. France, same thing, over the hump. United Kingdom, the deaths are starting to fall in the United Kingdom as of hospitalizations, which is excellent. United States, not really over the hump, flattening at the top, but still around 2,000 deaths a day. And Canada, certainly not over the hump yet, over 200, sorry, over 150 deaths a day. Again, just to emphasize the new cases per day in Canada continue to slowly grumble and rise. We're not over the hump yet, but hopefully we're flattening. And the new cases, new deaths per day in Canada look to be increasing. Here are the provincial cases of COVID-19. Canada in total with now over 60,000 cases. Alberta and British Columbia. Alberta's picking up a few new cases over British Columbia. Ontario, closing in on 20,000 cases, and Quebec is now over 30,000 cases. Take home point here, 85% of cases are in Ontario and Quebec. Here are the rest of the provinces. Nova Scotia is now flattened out. They had a slight uptick in Saskatchewan. Everybody else is fairly flat. Here are the cumulative deaths. Canada in total, almost at 4,000. Alberta, British Columbia, Ontario, and Quebec. Big take-home point here, 93% of the deaths are in Ontario and Quebec. COVID started on January 25th in Canada. It is now May the 4th. So we're now at 100 days of COVID-19 in Canada. We can now reflect on this. I'm going to show some calendars coming up. They're going to get a little bit busy. We'll have a little bit of humor as well. Remember that I'm in the best chair to sit in, the chair of hindsight. It's always easiest to sit and look back and be critical. Let's not be too critical, though. Let's have a little bit of fun. The first case was reported in Toronto on 25th of January. It was a man in his 50s returning from Wuhan, China. The following day, his wife was diagnosed. and That was the second case in in Canada. 
The first case in British Columbia was a man in his 40s returning from China on the 28th of January. And the third case in Ontario was a student at Western University who was also from China. So the first few cases were all travelers. On the 4th of January, the World Health Organization reported the new virus in China. The 22nd, the United States had it totally under control. On the 30th, the World Health Organization issued a global health emergency. And by the 1st of January, it was a public health emergency in the United States. Into February 2020. Second case in British Columbia, a woman who'd been, who had family visiting from Hubei, China. The 6th of February, third and fourth cases in BC from the same household as the second case. The 14th and 5th case in BC is a woman returning again from China. The 6th case in BC on the 20th was a woman returning from Iran. The 4th case in Ontario on the 23rd of February was a woman returning from China. The 7th case was in BC was a man who was in close contact with the 6th case who had just returned from Iran. The 5th case in Ontario, a woman who traveled from Iran. First case in Quebec was February 27th, a woman returning from Iran. The 6th, 7th and 8th cases in Ontario were in travelers on the 28th of February. 29th of February, the 8th case in BC and Ontario had now 11 cases. Again, January and February, all the early cases were people returning from travel. The 2nd, the United States had this shut down. By the 10th of February, they thought it would miraculously go away. On the 25th of February, everything was under control south of the border. Into March, 15 cases in Ontario on the 1st, 18 on the 2nd, 20 on the 3rd. 9 cases in BC on the 4th of March, and 17 cases on the 5th, and they documented their first community spread. Alberta had its first case. By Friday, Ontario had 23 cases. Alberta had two cases. The following Wednesday, the NBA suspended its season, the stock market plunged, and the World Health Organization issued a global pandemic. The following way, Justin Trudeau's wife tested positive. NHL suspended their season. On the 13th, on the Friday, panic buying started. Everybody started buying toilet paper for some unknown reason, and all the churches closed. By the 15th, first three cases reported in Nova Scotia. 16th, Canada closed the border to non-Americans. Ontario issued a state of emergency on March 17th, followed by Alberta. The United States and Canada border was closed two days later to non-essential travel. BC issued a state of emergency on the 18th of March. By the 20th of March, there was now 1,000 cases in Canada. 21st, isolation measures were in full force across Canada. Here are the numbers in the provinces on the 7th of March. Ontario is at the top, followed by C, BC, sorry, followed by Quebec, then BC, then Alberta. Just watch as the numbers grow. So roughly Ontario and BC were similar, so were Quebec and Alberta. The following week, Quebec and Alberta pretty close, and Ontario and BC pretty close. Fast forward two more weeks, Ontario and BC pretty close. Quebec is now zoomed ahead of everybody, and Alberta is just behind BC. The following week, Ontario has really zoomed ahead, over 3,500 cases. Quebec is almost 7,000 now. BC is flattened out, and, and Alberta is still doubled. And if you look on March the 8th, we had 62 cases in Canada, 1,430 on the 22nd, and 6,255 on the 29th. What was going on south of the border? Well, on the 10th of March, it's just going to go away. On the 16th, they knew it was a pandemic then, before anybody else. On the 24th of March, the famous, it will be gone by Easter. Well, let's see. End of April, the month of Easter. 14,000 cases on the 5th. 24,000 on Easter Sunday on the 12th. 34,000 on the 19th. And 46,000, or almost 47,000 on the 26th. If you look, it's roughly increasing by 10 or so, 10,000 or so every week. Here are the provinces. The 4th, you saw those numbers already. The 11th, 18th, 25th. On the 7th of April, the World Health Organization had blown it. On the 14th, the United States pulled their funding for the World Health Organization. And on the 23rd of April, the famous inject Lysol and drink bleach speech. And what happened on Easter Sunday? Well, they had over 560,000 cases in the United States.
certainly not gone away by Easter. Into May, May 3rd, that was yesterday, we had 56,714 cases in Canada. Here are the provincial numbers now, 17,000 in Ontario, over 30,000 in Quebec, over 2,000 in BC, and over 5,500 in Alberta. Today, though, is a happy day. It's Star Wars Day. May the 4th be with you. So what's going on around the rest of the world now after that recap? Here's Austria. They've opened up a bit. Okay, the dark line is the three-day moving average here. So the average of cases over the three days. It's pretty good. They haven't upticked yet. This is good. We'll keep an eye on this. Here's Australia. Again, doing pretty well. We'll have to keep an eye on this. Sweden. Everybody wants to know about Sweden. They haven't really locked down. They have social distance, though, but they haven't totally locked down. Again, Sweden has about 500 cases uh, or so on average a day. If you look at their neighbor next door, which is Norway, who've totally knocked down, they've got about 50 cases a day. So they're certainly doing better than Sweden. South Korea has certainly flattened out and stayed flat, which is great news. But on the other side of the world, in Russia, they've not done so well. Their cases are certainly increasing significantly. Same in Brazil. And the same now in India. So how do you quantify the magnitude of COVID-19? Well, one way is through case reporting, but it's only good as the number of people you test. The second way is through reporting of deaths due to COVID-19, but that's only as good as coding in the hospitals, and you miss a lot of community deaths. And the third way to do it, it might be probably the most accurate way, is to look at the excess number of deaths in a country. And you compare that excess number of deaths to historical data. So John Byrne Murdoch of the Financial Times has done this. He's gone through all the countries and looked at excess deaths. The next slide is going to be busy. I'm going to take you through a few of the key highlights. All right, I want to focus, first of all, on this middle column here, okay? Uh, Austria has about 800 excess deaths over the historical average, about 13%. Germany, about 3%. Norway has had no excess deaths. They locked down early. Their neighbor, Sweden, has had 1,700 excess deaths, or about 23%. So there's a big difference here between locking down and not locking down, although Sweden's healthcare system is not over capacity. We look over here, these are some of the worst numbers. England and Wales, 27,000 excess deaths. France, 20,000. Netherlands, almost 8,000. And Spain, about 29,000. Again, similar stories in Italy at 21,500. The United States had about 20,800 deaths. We'll have to keep an eye on this graph as we move forward. When we look at all of the countries we've been following here in this blog, we see growth that's ongoing but slower. So the increase from the last time I, I talked to now, over the last week, the United States has gone up 204,000, Italy 11,000, Spain 19,000, Germany 8,000, France 6,000, United Kingdom 33,000, and Canada 12,000. Three highest gainers in percentage-wise are Canada 25%, United Kingdom 21%, United States at 20%. So remember, folks, it's really important that we continue to hold the line. We're certainly not falling like we like to see in Canada. We still have to respect social distancing, especially as the weather gets nicer. Kurt Collins in London, Ontario, is still supporting small businesses and frontline workers. This is a piece of history. Go to collinscolors.com under Canada Strong and get your piece of history today, one of these great hoodies or t-shirts. And again, you can see Bill at the physiotherapyroom.com to get your personal protective equipment. Apparently it's selling like hotcakes and there's more supplies coming this week. So remember folks, do your part to flatten that curve. Stay home, stay safe, and please save lives.